So you know that we can describe light by rays that go like this, and we've done a lot of that in optics. We can also describe it by wave fronts, where I guess that's the top of each wave. And it's kind of like crest, and then crest, and then crest, and that's cool. So I wanna talk about waves in terms of wave fronts coming into a barrier. So here is <clears throat> a barrier where waves come, and you can do this with water. It's really easy with water. And here are some wave fronts coming in. Wave front, wave front, wave front, wave front. So I guess that means that the rays are normal to the front, so the light is coming in here all parallel. It must be from a source very far away, or it must have been collimated or something. But Hohen's principle, her Hohen's, oh boy, that's hard to say, H-U-Y-G-E-N. This is Hohen's principle, and he says, this is extremely profound, he says that every point on a wave front is a source of spherical waves at all times. So every point on this wave front here is creating a new spherical wave front. So what's happening as we reach this barrier is that all of the wave here is being blocked and all of the wave here is being blocked. So we're able to actually see Hohen's principle at work. These locations right here are very close to each other <clears throat> and they become locations from which a new wave springs, and that's why sound can bend around a corner. Perhaps you didn't believe that sound can bend around a corner. Perhaps you never believed that sound was a wave. Well, let me prove it to you. I'm gonna go around the corner. I'm literally, literally going to be on the opposite side of this door, and you can still hear me. Yeah, I'm quieter, but it's not reflection that you're hearing. Primarily, you're hearing the sound bend around. If we were to set this up really clever-like, I could make you another little uh, barrier over here. Let's say I make a barrier in, the, in this big old room. I make a barrier right here. And uh, what's gonna happen is, uh, maybe I should angle a little bit more gently. No, it's cool. Every point on here, I'm gonna have this coming in like this, and it comes in like this, and this location right here becomes a new wave front, and now I've got waves that come out like this. They're supposed to have the same wavelength all the time if I'm in the same medium, so this should be the wavelength, and it should be equal to this wavelength that's over here. But notice that now I've got waves that are going back when my original waves were going this direction. I hope that doesn't bother you. It's a little bit weird, but Hermann's principle is really, really weird when you try to apply it to a wave that's just a, a plane wave like this, just moving in. And uh, let's see if we can make some sense out of that. But here's Hermann's principle at an interface. Wait, this means some really cool things for us. This means some really cool things. Well, we'll look at that in just a moment. First, we have to figure out how a plane wave can be represented by Hohen's principle. <clears throat> I'm gonna study three locations on this plane wave. Nah, four. This one, this one, this one, and this one. And if I treat each of these as being a source of new waves, then I'll say that, uh, well, here's the wavelength, right? So I'm gonna say that right here, it will make a new wave. Right? And right here, this one will make a new wave that's like, hang on just a second, like that, right? Going out like that. This one makes a new wave that's going out like that. This one makes a new wave, sorry, this one makes a new wave that's going out like that. And this one makes a new wave that's going out like that. Now the interesting thing about this new wave that's been formed by each of these four points here is that we're going to get constructive interference right here at the front. And the cool thing is that a moment later, this wave became that wave, and this wave becomes that wave, and so that's the progression of the wave. If we've got a flat wall here and a flat wall here, that wave's just gonna move right on through, and Hohen's principle is simply a statement that plane waves can move unimpeded. But if you get to a break where only one of these new wave fronts, these new spherical wave fronts is able to get through, it's then that you see that a plane wave is actually made up of an infinite superposition of spherical waves. Whoa. A plane wave is an infinite superposition of spherical waves. That's pretty cool. The next thing we need to do with Hohen's principle is give you a barrier that has two gaps in it. And then we're going to have ourselves a very interesting experience. This was Young's idea. It was 1804. Lewis and Clark were out to explore the, uh, what was he gonna do? Was it 1801 or 1804? I don't know. 
I'm getting some conflicting opinions. But anyway, we were certainly about to buy the Louisiana Territory or had just bought the Louisiana Territory or something in the United States. And sometime around there, this fellow named Young over in England had a great idea. He was so brilliant, he deciphered, check this out, this guy deciphered the freaking Rosetta Stone. and founded that software company, just kidding. He actually deciphered the actual Rosetta Stone, and if I have waves coming in here, and the waves, well, they're coming from this direction. If waves are coming in here like this, then I'm gonna see Hohen's principle right here. I've got a new spherical source of waves here, and let me just draw one more wave at the risk of being coming incredibly complicated. I'll draw even another. And we have a spherical source of waves right here. And remember, I have to try to get these uh, to be the same wavelength. That's always a little bit complicated. <gasps> We've got two sources of monochromatic and coherent light. And if I continue drawing these, you will see that we have regions of completely constructive interference right up the middle. If I draw one more, I guess you'll believe me there. Watch that. Yeah, and we've got completely destructive interference where the, oh my goodness, look, I got constructive interference here. I got constructive interference here. I got constructive interference here. I got destructive interference, let's draw that in orange, where trough, meet, trough meets crest, right in the middle there, and right in the middle there, and probably right over here also, and then some more constructive interference there. Wow, wow, so waves can interfere with themselves if you let them go through two slits. We'll do Young's double slit diffraction experiment in the next slide, so you'll have to, um, I mean the next video, you'll have to wait for that. Bye-bye.